Hello, hello. Linda White here with another installment of Shakuri's Time Capsule, where we wax nostalgic over fads, fashions, and lifestyles of yesteryear. By the way, Happy New Year. Now that 2020 is in our rearview mirror, let's pray that 2021 brings us renewed hope, health, and prosperity. Speaking of the new year, since a lot of folks tend to set diet and exercise-related goals this time of year, I thought I'd dedicate this first podcast of 2021 to a look back at vintage exercise equipment. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I see old photos of early 20th century exercise equipment, it tends to look more like medieval torture devices to me rather than something that somebody would voluntarily use. The first thing that immediately comes to my mind whenever I think about vintage exercise fads is that vibrating slimming belt machine. Now, if you'd watched any sitcoms from the 50s or 60s that featured a character who's trying to lose weight, chances are you know what I'm talking about. These machines looked like doctor's office scales that had a wide belt attached. Sometimes there were two belts, and you'd wrap them around your hips. Then you'd turn the machine on, and the belt would jiggle your rear end. Now, these things had actually been around since the 1920s, but really hit its peak in the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. The thinking was that the vibration would burn fat from the abdomen, hips, and thighs, Now, whether they really worked or not is anyone's guess. They seemed to last a long time, so I'm assuming that there was some sort of slimming benefit from them, even though my gut instinct says no way. Now, oddly enough, a 2012 article in a British newspaper, I think it was the Daily Mail, claimed that these old-fashioned vibrating belt machines actually might help improve the health of obese people, even though they don't lose any weight. Apparently, some studies have shown that daily 15-minute bouts of low-intensity vibration could help immune and bone problems that are linked with being severely overweight, and the experts hope it will aid the obese to get their health back. Although I personally take this with a huge grain of salt, who knows? Maybe there's some merit to these machines after all, even if they don't necessarily help you shed those unwanted pounds. Another gizmo I used to see on mid-20th century TV was that barrel exercise machine that had all the rollers on it, which were supposed to roll the fat away. I've also seen these advertised as massagers. Now, I can definitely picture these things as more of a massage device than something that would burn fat. I'll make sure to post a photo of one of these gizmos along with the aforementioned vibrating belt machine on this podcast Instagram feed, by the way. Okay, let's fast forward to the 1980s. By now, aerobics are more in vogue, and thanks to the popularity of the VCR, exercise videos were all the rage. Richard Simmons and Jane Fonda were pioneers in the home workout movement. After that, it was like every other celebrity came out with their own workout tape. And Olivia Newton-John also came out with her Let's Get Physical song. Even fashions of the 80s reflected the workout trend with everyone wearing leg warmers and sweatshirts. But the 80s also spawned some interesting exercise equipment of its own. Remember the abdominizer, that plastic chair-looking thing with the handles? This was supposed to aid the user in doing crunches. I had to giggle when I learned that a lot of people were using these things as sleds instead, to the point where the company started putting a warning label on them. Along came the 90s when Suzanne Summers introduced us to the Thigh Master. Now, you remember the Thigh Master. It kind of resembled a huge steel butterfly with padding. The idea was to use your thighs to squeeze the handles of this thing inward, thus toning your inner legs. Then later on, we had Tony Little and his ponytail come on the scene with the gazelle, which is a sort of elliptical glider device. I know I left out a lot of things due to time constraints. Just do an internet search for vintage exercise equipment and you'll find a plethora of interesting photos. The ones from the very early 1900s are especially scary. 
Again, I'll make sure to post photos on this podcast Instagram feed. You'll find it under Shakuri's Time Capsule, all one word. Before I go, I just want to mention that this podcast is brought to you by my two books, Yellow Gal, Queen of the Montclair, and The Bell of Camden County, both written by me, Linda M. White. They're stories that take place in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and they deal with the subjects of romance and racial identity. They're currently available on Amazon in both paperback and digital format. As always, I thank each and every one of you for listening and wish you all the very, very best for 2021. Adios. (laughs) 